The story of ancient Greek philosophy begins on the western coast of Turkey in 585 BC. Thales bore a philosophical daughter, which was that the world was made of water. Anaximander thought that it was made of stuff. But Anaximenes said, hey, enough is enough. He had a new theory, made with care. He decided that the world was made of air. Pythagoras and his followers were a bunch of fanatics who thought that the world was purely mathematics. A squared and B squared, together he paired. In a right angle triangle, A equals C squared. Heraclitus thought the world was composed of fire. This greatly raised Parmenides' ire. He thought the world was an immovable block, and the past and the future were completely locked. We have no free will at all, he said. Heraclitus replied, Hey, you must be brain dead. Zeno of Alea agreed with Parmenides. But now let's talk about Empedocles. Love and strife were the two main forces, as he explained in one of his many discourses. They brought together earth, fire, water, and air, which comprised the world, as he did declare. The first Athenian philosopher was Socrates. The Democrats hated him, they weren't much pleased. He told Athenian youth to question all they were told. He was an innovator, he really broke the mold. He was found guilty by a court, which wasn't a shock, and was forced to drink a cup of poison and hemlock. This inspired Plato to write some dialogues, which were a series of conversation logs. He thought the best rulers were philosopher kings, and they would run our governments and cities and things. He wrote quite a few of society's norms, because he thought of something called the theory of forms. He thought that humanity was trapped in a cave, watching shadows on the wall, needing to be saved. And he was a man who'd broken out of his prison, and saw the puppet master, and all he'd been missing. He was blinded by the sun, but came to see that seeing the truth was the best place to be. So he'd gone back into the cave and he's been met by laughter. No one wants to listen to this wise old master. His theory says that there's a world of ours, with perfect chairs and stairs and cars. This was where the gods resided, and our world's only part of where they presided. Our world is just a shadow and imperfect reflection, but if you're a philosopher, you can make a connection. Aristotle was his student, he invented logic. It was used to prove stuff in a manner demagogic. After Aristotle, there were four main schools, and each had their own set of rules. Epicureanism was the first of the four. Epicurus was cool, he wasn't a bore. He thought atoms made our world, just like we do today. Tiny uncuttable parts in a special array. He thought that we should chill out, relax a bit, stay out of politics, and not care a whit. Zeno of Citium heartily disagreed, for he founded Stoicism and said, To succeed, you must forget all emotion and do your part for your country. That would be smart. Diogenes was a dude who lived in a barrel, dressing as he pleased, not caring about apparel. He was found one day by Alexander the Great, who gave him a new chance, an entirely clean slate. He asked what he could do to help in his plight. Diogenes responded, Yay, you can step out of my light. This was called cynicism, which means they don't care about what people think of them, or cleaning their hair. Ew. Pyro the skeptic thought nothing could be proved. By logic or experiment, he just couldn't be moved. And that's the story of ancient Greek thought. We've said very little, but there is a lot. We encourage you to read some more, and hope that we didn't cause you to snore.